It is pervasive in both cultural and religious messages, the idea or symbolism that, in one way or another, we are all one, or should just all merge into oneness. This takes several forms, from more obvious to more subtle and hidden, and it is, in my observation, a ruse to destroy the connection to truth within mankind, that is the only being in this reality capable of both discerning its illusionary nature and of actively powering or disempowering it. In my view, true freedom is to be in the service of love. But to say such a thing, I must first make sure I understand what service is and what love is in truth. Language, as I've stated before on another contemplation, is to me merely programming code and therefore incapable of actually representing anything true. When we say the word truth, then we try to convey a state to which we can assign several attributes and adjectives in the attempt of approximation. Although truth is, in language, represented by a single word, it is not representative of a single object, idea, or state of being. If truth was made up of a singleness, that is, a sole single expression of itself, then doubt and dissent, in its most, most varied forms, would also never had room to exist or manifest, whose product we live in this reality right now. Moreover, if truth had but one single expression, false reality would not be able to copy from it as a simulacrum, which is what it does. We must note that, although reality is a falsified copy of truth, it is nevertheless formed, formed in relation to what it tries to copy and shut away. For example, video footage of a beautiful scenery may be able to approximate the actual experience seen and heard by the cameraman, but it will always be just a representation of the actual scenery with the specific light and other conditions using the limits of those lenses and microphones that also will never repeat exactly the same. Reality is that analogous video footage so similar to a latent hidden memory, hence its appeal. Truth would be the analogous, uh, analogous beautiful scenery only absolutely experienceable directly. Another metaphor I may use to convey this idea is that of the light and darkness dichotomy. Of course, please bear in mind that as I do so, I am not affirming that all actual light is truth. I am merely using this as a metaphor to better convey what I am contemplating regarding this, this matter. Let us only count the sense of sight for the metaphor to simplify. So if one has a light source, although one could say that this source is a single thing, as a simplification, it is actually a group of individual energy elements. Let's call them light rays, because I do not like the name photon. Each of them revealing and taking the shape of what they are lighting. All are rays, but each of them goes in a different way, spreading their essence, expressing the nature of what they encounter and expanding their presence, so to speak. We can see through the conjunction of the different individual light rays what is there, present. Note also that the rays are not put together by the light source, that is, they are not assembled, but are emanated. So they are pure individual expressions of that one source. Light is, in this example, a symbol for a whole that is made up of the individual aspects of it, all of its rays, so to speak. One single ray could not illuminate the whole place, but a multitude of individual rays can do so, making up altogether the whole light source. Darkness, on the other hand, can only exist as one, that is, as a single thing. Regardless of the object or shape present, when it is dark, it is all unseen as oneness, as a single darkness without any differentiation. Absence is, therefore, the only thing that makes everyone the same, 
because absence reduces everything to the lowest common denominator. So darkness, which is absence of the individual light rays coming from that light source, unites everything into an even oneness that is nothing but sheer lack. Likewise, a bully tries to reduce others so that he can pretend they share his same absence and try to be emperor in that fictional realm he scripts and imposes on others. If we now transpose this simple metaphor to our predicament, we can understand that the ongoing ceaseless push towards unification and standardization of each and every aspect of existence in this reality only occurs because it is the nature of that which is not truth to try to condense itself into a single undifferentiated entity or construct, a mega-absence, a black hole, if one can borrow science fiction's terminology, or using the code of the metaphor used, a single darkness. Now darkness does not subsist where light is, in the same manner that falsehood cannot survive truth. So like a thick curtain placed on a window, darkness and falsehood attempt to convince the reality contained in the room that they are already seeing light and truth, to prevent them from ever considering going to look behind the curtain, if they can even find the curtain in the first place, that is. And those that do look and slightly slide the curtain and do see reality with that true light are unable to remove the curtain completely because of those who, addicted as they, ha as they have become of living in the darkness, will enforce it, attacking the individual, insulting, using violence and any deceitful trick to ensure the truth never comes in through that window. Otherwise, they would have to see and cast away the object of their addiction. Once more, a bully needs to maintain and secure his imposed script, which creates absence in all others around, especially anyone who stands out brightly, so that the illusion of personality addiction may continue, which is the only existence the bully imagines, as he or she lives in absence and fears what he sees others having. Plato's Cave, indeed. One world government, one world religion, or coined emotionally triggering affirmations such as we are all equal, the same, were it not for the bigotry of mankind. A half-truth is a lie. We may indeed be all from one. We may be certainly all parts of or expressions of one. But we are not all exactly the same. Again, only the bully needs to become the one, insecure and thirsting for worship and attention as it is, because it lacks. The whole being, on the other hand, already simply is and does not require energy from those around him. That is what the bully fears. That whole being emanates from, the, from and shines with truth. But it is its own individual expression of that truth source. What the system intends is to become the manifestation of the ultimate bully, that is, to ensure all those in it are rounded down to the same subsistence, subservience, and absence-focused mentality, to make them all one, an homo homogeneous mass made up of one darkness cut off from any of their individual rays of truth. To do that, the system will entice those of us who do have truth connection to replace it with a cheap copy of it. Yes, most probably enticing you with a false truth using words, motion and becoming, instead of truth's silence, stillness and being. That's right, that's why you may call me repetitive, but I still really can't emphasize it enough. Truth speaks no words. And I also affirm that it does not move or become, so it does not need growth, progress, evolution, work towards, etc., etc. 
It already is, eternally. Bearing our own ray of truth in this reality carries with it both big responsibility and eternal blessing. Such rays, as I am calling them now, are responsible for being an individual light source over the darkness, immediately in contact with them. So they should not choose good or evil, but the middle path, as these are traps set there to cage them in falsehood, but merely they need to realize and be nothing more than a facilitator of others' observation and contemplation with the same light, which is already the blessing too. We are all brethren rays of truth, but no, we are not all one. We are all from one truth, each of us an own expression of it, as individual as it, as it gets. The system will attempt to offer you a wide array of apparent individual expressions, all of them already catalogued and thus linked to the darkness of fabricated reality. No concepts, no words can ever truly reach an approximation to describe your connection. So do not let yourselves be fooled by the salesman selling you truth with words, motion and becoming. Remember the truth you are yourselves, and it is always silent, motionless and eternally being. It doesn't go anywhere, nor does it become anything, and it needs no speech or book to reach you, because the ray in you is already made up of it. Discover the ray. Don't let darkness make you one with itself. Don't let it extinguish your ray. Also, don't run from reality in its circumstance, but do not take it personally either. You do not need to belong, but also you should not turn your back on the world. You all hold inside a unique individual aspect of truth that shines on its own, so don't let yourself become a light bulb produced in mass in a factory by machines of spells and rituals. Bring their spells to the fore and burn them under the pure light in your conscious truth. All you need to do is understand, realize, because that removes a part of the curtain and allows realization of truth to shine through. So shine, shine on, you crazy diamonds. Don't take it personally, we're all crazy here. In fact, never take anything personally.